Now I'm logged in as uh, the member of my marketing department again. So let's hop back into all sites search. And I'm going to execute a query. Now in all sites search, instead of getting the people matches web part, my marketing audience sees the federated results web part. For illustration, let's say that I know my marketing team really doesn't care about sharing knowledge within the organization. However, they are interested in understanding what's happening in the outside world and obtaining external market research. To help them with their needs, I've set the federated results web part to appear specifically for the marketing audience. This allows them to see search results from global search engines through SharePoint. Now let's jump into the administrative interface to show you how I did this. I'm going to first go to the site actions and edit the page. And we'll see here that I've already imp implemented the federated results web part. In fact, you can actually see I've already implemented the people matches web, web part, but this is set to a specific audience for the engineering department, so I'm not showing it here, uh, actually in my user interface. So here I'm going to edit my federated results web part. And I'm going to expand advanced and jump down to target audiences. In this example, you can see that I've already applied this uh, for the marketing audience, but I could just as easily add other audiences. And click on browse here, and I could actually find my engineering audience right here and then add them. Now, I don't want to do that in this particular case, um, but that option is available for me. So I'm going to cancel out of that, and if I actually did want to apply something new here, I would click OK. But in this case, I'm going to cancel. And once I've applied my new audiences, I do want to save and close and actually uh, check in my page if I want somebody else to be able to use it. Now, these changes do take a little time to apply across the farm, so don't be surprised if it takes a few minutes for users to see your edits. Uh, this is actually why I've applied these changes in advance. It's also important to note that there are complications with several of the web parts uh, in SharePoint 2010 if you're attempting, attempting to display two or more of the same web parts on the page. Um, it's not that it isn't possible to do, uh, but customization uh, can be very, very difficult if you're trying to uh, deploy two web parts uh, that are the exact same on a page for different audiences. For example, the refinement panel web part. If you add two refinement panel web parts on the same results page, they'll behave the same regardless of the different configurations you build into each. They're not treated like different refinement panels on separate pages since they share the same refinement manager. There are some very, very complicated workarounds to this with XSL customization, but that topic is beyond the scope of this particular webinar. Now let's look at a different site. When we looked at basic SharePoint audience targeting, I pointed out that you can only set this for web parts to appear for selected audiences. However, I didn't point out that this is only a macro level solution. You can only target which web parts appear to users. You cannot customize the settings that appear within each web part based off of the audience. Let me reiterate this because this is very important. Uh, with SharePoint, you can have one web part that can be set to function in one specific way to one group of audiences. That web part cannot be set to function in different ways depending on the audience. Ontolica Search overcomes this restriction. For those of you with Ontolica, you can deploy one web part that works completely different depending on your audience. To demonstrate this, I'll show you how to create a custom quick filter that is targeted to a specific audience. So here, let's jump into an Ontolica search center.
to review quick filters in Ontolica Search are radio buttons or checkboxes that allow your users to quickly set search parameters from a predefined list. For example, on this site, I already have quick filters that allow me to quickly jump between all search results and just documents. However, these are just default quick filters. I may notice that my users are frequently visiting the advanced search page to build custom queries. When users are forced to go to the advanced search page, um, on a regular basis they can become uh, very laborious and that process can become very time consuming. To avoid forcing users to go to the advanced search page, I can build quick filters for very popular query restrictions. In addition, I can create quick filters uh, that are customized based off of my user's audience. The ability to set quick set features and web parts uh, is extremely useful in real environments. For example, I may recognize that my marketing team regularly needs to search for marketing collateral in PDF format. On the same search center, I may also recognize that my engineering team is looking for AutoCAD files that were produced in the last 30 days. With Ontolica, I can build quick filters for both of these needs based off of the same web part. For an example, uh, let's say that I recognize that my North American team is frequently searching for documents authorized by my colleague Torben. Instead of forcing them to use the advanced search page uh, to create refine searches for documents authored by Torben, I give them one quick filter, one little radio button to automatically throw in the appropriate properties. Creating an audience targeted quick filter to improve the search experience with Ontolica is quite easy. I just need to go to Site Actions and Site Settings. And I need to go to Ontolica Search Tabs. At this point, I just want to double check that I'm working with the right site here. I am uh, working with Ontolica Search and Preview site. And then I want to work with all sites. At this point, I can see many of the configuration settings for Ontolica Search. So now, since I want to create a quick filter, I want to se select that appropriate link. I then want to add a new quick filter. I now just need to enter the appropriate settings for my quick filter. So let's call this Documents by Torben. And I need to create a query. So I know that we want the author to be like Torben. And then let's say that in my environment, uh, I consider documents to be PDF or Word files. Uh, so I might want to enter the parameter file type equals PDF and doc. And let's say docx. So this is going to give me the, the query for. Uh, I want any of the the authors that uh, appear to be like Torben, and I want to include all file types for PDF and uh, in doc and docx files. And then the last thing that I want to do is I want to make sure that I set this for a particular audience. So we mentioned that we w wanted to work with the North American audience here. So here let's browse the audience that I have. and I'll add them. So delete what I've done here already. And um, make sure that I I want to make sure that I'm noticed that I'm setting the audience for just this feature. This is not the audience for the entire web part. If I had time, I could go back through this process and create a, a different quick filter that only appeared for my European audience within the same web part. At this point, I'm just going to click OK. And then I want to go check out the new quick filter. And enter a search. And we'll notice that right off the back, I have 108 results here.
and we built our new quick filter that is automatically showing here uh, for documents written by Torben. So I'll click on that. We'll notice that my parameters thrown in here, and I've now automatically quickly narrowed down to just 18 documents. The final setting that I want to show you in Ontolica Search is how to set your query suggestions to be driven based off of the user's department. To review, automatic search suggestions are populated based off of the user's experiences within Ontolica. So here, when I start to enter a query, Ontolica will begin to automatically populate uh, uh, query suggestions for me. This is somewhat like your experiences on Google. These suggestions are based off of the search experiences of users in your environment, and they continuously evolve over time to enhance your search experience. Unlike the search suggestions in standard SharePoint 2010, uh, you can target these suggestions. To do this, you simply need to edit the search dialog web part. So here, I'm going to edit the page. And edit the search dialog web part. And head on down to the auto suggestion options. At this point, I can see that my auto suggestions are being generated based off of all departments and all search centers. Now, I have some various different options here, uh, but for the case of audience targeting, I have a few different options. I can set my search suggestions to come out of a silo based off of the user's particular department. So that's if I'm logged in as a marketing user, I will only see suggestions based off of the experiences of other people in the marketing department. Um, if I log in as, as somebody as an engineer, um, I'll only see search suggestions based off the experiences of people in the uh, engineering department. Alternatively, I could even target these based off of a particular search center. So regardless of my department, it provides me suggestions based off of where I'm searching, not who I am. But here I'll just set this to the current user's department. And I'm fine with all the other parameters. And I'll click OK. And then, of course, I want to stop editing. And with that, I'll bring the Surfrace sponsored webinar on creating audience targeted search experiences in SharePoint to a close. After this webinar, if you have any questions about Ontolica Search or Search in your standard SharePoint 2010 environment, please feel free to contact us directly at the details shown here. Again, on behalf of Surfray, I'd like to thank you for joining our webinar on creating audience targeted search experiences in SharePoint.